The Non-Aligned Monument commemorates the Conference of Foreign Ministers of Non-Aligned Countries held in Guyana, August 8-11, 1972. It was unveiled by His Excellency, the late Otto Chung, the first President of Guyana. From the Non-Aligned Monument adorned with rocks from the Orinduke Waterfall, I am Lorene Ward. Welcome to Homestretch Magazine. This week we will highlight Personality Profile. Old to New, Guyana Business Magazine, Remembering Stowell Michael and Photo of Two Week. Ever thought about the amount of trash you dispose of regularly? Here's how to turn your trash into treasure. Recycling is basically an upgrade to old materials by using the damaged materials and transforming them into something useful and beautiful. Not to be confused with recycling since this process requires materials to be broken down and converted into a new product, while upcycling reuses the object as it is but simply refashions it. Like for example, you can use the toilet rolls in their houses that you would normally throw away the cardboards, the magazines the plastic bottles, the tire tubes, the rubber that comes off your bicycle, you can all use that, add value to it with your craftsmanship and so forth, make them into jewelry or any craft and they became, become upcycled. Hearing the word upcycle may give you the impression that this is a modern innovation. In fact, upcycling is eons old. It's the same as refurbishing or remodeling. One local company focuses on upcycling by creating various craft materials from upcycled products. For example, we make jewelry. We make jewelry out of paper. We, we make earrings, necklaces, um, headdress, even clothing. We um, display our fashion at Reflections by Nissan Nurse in 2017. We display fashion made out of paper. And here we have a statement piece that is made out of bicycle tube. Believe it or not, this is bicycle tube all around with a little bit of hemp card for design. First of all, bicycle tube, it's puncture. You get it out, you throw it away or you just leave it, you know, at the side of your house and that's it. Well, you can make jewelry out of it. You basically, you wash it, you clean it up, you polish it with, a, with whatever oil or ointment you want to use to shine it and polish it up. And then after you just cut into whatever design you want and you can string it through cards, you can make earrings. A lot of the beekeepers will have beeswax at their disposal and they normally throw it away. What you can do is you can buy it from them or if it's given away and you bring it to a boil, you add your scents because they're scented candles, you boil it and mix it together, you can add your color so you can have red, green, white candle, but the original beeswax do have a mustard yellow color to it. So you can leave it to that. Strain all, all the liquid through a cotton cloth into your bottle and you use a cotton wick. You can, it sell, it's sold all around Georgetown, any cotton wick. And there you have your candle. And one of the things about beeswax candle, it filters the air. So if you're asthmatic, it helps you to breathe better. Here we have here a pencil made from scratch from bamboos. So bamboo trees are all across Guyana. You can pick it at the side of the road. You can go in Sapphire where there's a lot. And we just cut in the middle with a drum mill tool. We buy the points, the pencil points, and we put sealant over them. The bamboo is treated so you won't find creatures eating away at them. And we just put the map of Guyana as a logo, as part of branding. The next time you have something to throw out, think about upcycling and its benefits. It conserves the environment since there is less waste on dump sites, promotes creativity and innovation. Best of all, upcycling is cost efficient.
hope you're ready to put your upcycling skills to the test. Next, face throat with a glimpse of Guyana's Business Magazine 2019. Guyana, potential unleashed. This year, the Business Guyana magazine focuses on the massive economic potential that Guyana is gradually realizing. While Guyanese are excited about the oil discovery, this edition of the magazine highlights the potential of other sectors and how they will contribute to the growth of the economy as Guyana prepares for a new era of development. At a simple ceremony held at the Pegasus, Business Guyana 2019 was launched. This magazine gives very diverse perspectives on our economy, both to local and foreign investors and business people. And our theme this year for the magazine, I thought was very fitting. When they told it to me, they read it as Guyana Potential Unleashed. I mean, if you look at the beautiful video that the Guyana Tourism Authority produced, I mean, you can really see the true potential that's hidden in this gem. Since I've been the editor of the magazine for the second year, one thing which I've introduced is that of themes in the magazine. So last year we focused on a couple of themes, but this year with Guyana Potential Unleashed, I specifically captured a couple. Um, one is to understand Guyana's development outlook, so you'll see a couple of articles on those. Um, and then we're going to have a section on investment, sectors, regimes, regulations, some re relevant data, because after all, this is an investment magazine. We want to ensure that when someone picks this up, it's a one-stop shop for everything. Some of the sponsors on board are National Hardware, ExxonMobil, The Masterclass, Century Tamara Energy Services, VNet Communications, among many others. Patrons were entertained by violinist Akeem Adams as the program came to a close. Business Magazine provide an overview of investment opportunities available in all sectors. Be sure to get your copy. Our personality of the week is a young and vibrant geoscientist, Ms. Ashley Prasad. Ashley Prasad, a young, vibrant, and passionate geoscientist at ExxonMobil, Guyana. Uh, so I work in the Exploration and Adventures group in the Houston office with ExxonMobil, and um, my job role as a geoscientist is to, well, there are multiple things that I do, but the main project that I've been working on is prospecting and um, the technical maturation of the tilapia prospect. This interesting scientist attended School of the Nations. After sixth form, she migrated to the United States. There, she studied geology at the University of South Florida. Honestly, uh, I didn't realize the, the, the full impact of it until I drilled a well, and then I was like, wow, you know, the, imp the impact that it, this is going to have on my country and um, like you know just being able to contribute it even if it's um, in, in a small way initially but then like actually drilling a well and it being a discovery um, and you know contributing to the whole resource base for the country it was just something that was um, I don't like incredible and it like I can't put it into words. Ashlika family has been in the mining industry for 30 plus years. She had the exposure and opportunity to visit dredging operations in Potaro, Mazaruni. And I remember visiting the dredges and, um, and started collecting uh, rocks and pebbles and so on. And that really, that's really what sparked my interest. And then afterwards, um, I went into university. I went to University of South Florida. Um, and I attended this banquet and I met uh, a woman who works with Exxon and she was telling me about her job and just she really inspired me to pursue the petroleum industry essentially um, and then I applied to Exxon and I got an internship with them and after having that exposure 
um, I, you know, I met a lot of women who were in that similar career line as me, and it was very inspirational. And I was like, you know what, I can do this myself. After joining the Exxon Mobil team, Ashlika found herself working as the lead geoscientist, evaluating a new oil to prospect close to other recent discoveries offshore Guyana. She had the honor of naming that prospect tilapia, a fish well known in Guyana. So a lot of people, including myself, uh, didn't know that all of the wells so far have been named after fishers. Mm -hmm. And when I joined the team a year and a half ago, uh, my supervisor, he was telling me, okay, so far we've been really bad at naming the wells because <laughs> no one knows that these are fishes. And I was like, yes. So I decided to pick like the most common name that everyone would know without a doubt that this is a fish. So I just landed upon the name Tilapia. Like author profession, being a geoscientist comes with its challenges, except hers is on a personal level. A lot of it, um, I think is uh, personally, it's uh, the cultural difference is something that um, I struggled with initially. I mean, um, and not having a lot of work experience and being part of such a large corporation, that was something I also struggled with. Um, not that I can't be professional, but it's just how to adjust to that and then like also being in what people would think of as a man's world as well. Um, so I guess those are some of the challenges, but uh, again, you meet so many different people and so many people have different like stories to tell you and inspirational ones at that that kind of uh, assist you along the way in terms of being determined and thinking, okay, you know, I can do this, it seems everyone else. Ashley Kaprasad, a career woman aiming to inspire others. Honestly, I, I really just hope that my story uh, can be an inspiration to these women, and not only to women, but um, all the adolescent Guyanese, you know, who are hoping to pursue a career in petroleum. Extraordinary individual making a difference on our beautiful shores. A young man with support from his family left a legacy for generations. To be an artist means to be gifted with not only your hands, but also your mind. When an artist creates a potential masterpiece, he or she would first have to visualize it in their minds. One individual who was gifted in this field was artist and ceramicist Stowell Michael. Stowell Michael was born in Berbice on March 21, 1974. The family then moved to Suzaik and then to New Hope on the east bank of Demerara. His sister noted his creativity in making small figurines for the home and later signed him up for a program at the Burroughs School of Art. There he received a well-rounded training in all aspects of art and graduated in 1998. Stowell's brother Kirk Michael tells us of his journey to ceramics. He was majoring in painting, but he said he asked, he had conversations with past artists graduate and they said that painting is a very difficult thing to live off of because person prefer portraits a picture versus a painting. Mm -hmm. so he, he analyzed and he realized that it would be difficult to live up for that. Mm -hmm. So in the final year, he made a switch. That is, he moved from painting being his major and ceramics being his minor, to ceramics being a major and painting being a minor. So with that, he was an excellent painter, excellent ceramist. And with that, he made a decision and then he formed his company called Stowell Ceramics, in which I'm, I was his marketing manager. After realizing the great gift that Stowell possessed, his brother Kirk suggested that they display his craft at Guy Expo, where he was recognized and applauded for his work. One of his pieces was even bought and donated to the National Museum. Persons who would purchase from us, they asked us if we were aware of this thing they call Guy Expo. We hadn't know, known much about it. Okay. And they told us about it and encouraged us. So again, I took the lead role and we head off with a taxi pack up our stuff. And there we went and we experienced Guy Expo for the first time. And we got a lot of support. So well, he loved kids mm -hmm. and he liked to captivate them. Mm -hmm. So with that, he went on to make his first masterpiece, which was the treasure ship. And what he said, he's going to do this treasure ship in a Caribbean atmosphere. And his 
ceramics mm -hmm. is going to be the treasure that they're trying to that the the treasure hunter is trying to retrieve. Mm -hmm. So with that, at the bottom on the seabed, it was littered with stowell ceramics mm -hmm. pieces. Above it was the ship that was made, and it took quite a few years. It could be about four years, if my story right, when he made that boat, and he made that boat out of wood, uh, metal, uh, fabric. And the thing about Stowell's work, even though it's a boat, he could have just made a boat and inside could have been hollow. Yes. No, he's so thorough that he ensured that each deck was lack of floor. And if you look through the little windows in the boat, mm -hmm. you're gonna see activity, you're gonna see people inside. Wow. And that's, and again, that idea was to captivate mm -hmm. kids, right? Then we were engaged by the private sector um, and they made us an offer because the, the, the treasure ship mm -hmm. made all the major newspapers cover front page okay. and persons were coming to see it. His creations are handmade and intricately designed. This combination makes his work distinct as a clay artist. He worked on an apparatus which he made from a bicycle wheel and pedal. He also used items such as a roti pan and other local materials to make wheels for the carriages, figurines. Whatever Stowell said, a raw material that already showed you, a raw material, he said, this is going to be a table, it's going to be a horse and carriage. Whatever he said, you guarantee it will be. They had a lot of respect for him because he's a man of his word. Whatever he say, he's going to produce, he produced. In a nutshell, support from a family could really allow someone to venture into the areas that they have the imagination in their mind could come to reality. Mm -hmm. And Stowell was, was given that opportunity. And with that, Stowell has passed. And with that, we will continue as his family to provide mm -hmm. that platform so that potential, young potential artists could come and use the studio. Because what we observe too, a lot of persons who graduate from the Borough School of Art, they end up taking up regular jobs and putting aside the art. Mm -hmm. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna use Stowell Studio. We're gonna open it out to artists or persons who are interested in pottery. They can come, he has a kilt, a wheel, and they could come and use the studio, even if it's on a part-time basis, so that they can still continue his art. One of his passions was, he, he was saying that whatever he started here, he would like it to pass on to a next generation. Mm -hmm. My job, or I feel obligated to continue what he started, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do that. Stowell Michael was truly a talented individual, and he will surely be remembered in years to come. Stowell Michael's work is distinctive and can be viewed from any angle. Finally, photos of the week by 13-year-old nature lover Callis McKenzie of West Coast Burbies. Callis describes his pictures as Diana, a land of many waters. Her inner beauty lies within her long, stretching green land. Thanks, Callis, for the beautiful photos. You too can send your pictures or videos to our home stretch magazine Facebook page or homestretch magazine 2000 at gmail.com to be featured. Until we meet again, do remember to like our home search magazine Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I am Lorene Ward. Be safe, keep smiling, and stay positive.